for all of your glory in advance, for it is so. Amen. Go ahead and have your seats. I would like to use as a subject on this morning, I'm not a big subject preacher, but I'm going to use one, uh, Operation Shift. Operation Shift. Operation Shift. And the text is dealing with, the text is dealing with uh, a time of transition, of getting back to God. It is the story that starts off with the Levite who is married to the company. He is positioned in a state of being off balance. It is very rare that you find that a Levite in the Bible is married to a concubine. The truth of the matter is, in the story, she leaves him and it says that she goes to play the whore. Uh, after she has gone to her native land where her father is, the Bible records that it takes him three months before he decides that he wants to go and retrieve his bride again. Well, that is the first place where I found it kind of hard to dissect the scripture because if I'm married to a woman and I love her, I don't think it would take me three months to go and get my wife. So I found it to be conflictual with what the average man would do. But nevertheless, he decides to take three months to go and get her. But when he goes to get her, the Holy Writ records that his father-in-law, after embracing him, begins to retain him, which makes me to understand that he did not have the lesson concerning the importance of time. Uh, beloved, whatever we do in the body of Christ, we must understand that everything in God is time sensitive. Whatever we do, wherever we go, whatever we endeavor to achieve, it is time sensitive. That's why when I got here earlier today and I noticed that the service was going on, I was glad in my spirit because at least there's one church in Kenya that is time sensitive. You can't run three hours late and expect God to show up on time because he was already there and we missed him. Therefore, we must understand that everything, everything in God is time sensitive. And, and, and we don't have time to waste if we're already behind time like most believers are. Uh, the truth be told, uh, the Bible records that he stays there with him, he eats, he drinks, and he's merry with his servant that accompanied him, and he gets up to go uh, after three days, and the father-in-law convinces him to stay one more day. Uh, once again, he is behind time in God. Therefore, the next day he decides he's finally going to get up and go after sitting there and being retained for another day. But when he goes to depart, he is now traveling in a season that he should not be in. It is dangerous when we as believers begin to travel in seasons that we should not be in. Uh, I, I travel quite extensively and, and the Lord has blessed us to be kind of broad spread and, 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 and what I found out Bishop is that most leaders and most people in God today ask God for things that they should have obtained and required in last season if we're going to get what God has for us we must be in the timeline of what he is calling for for our present season Therefore, we can't chase the blessing of yesterday. Some stuff we've got to let go of if we're going to please the Lord. Everything won't be redeemed because there's some stuff that was taken away that God never intended for us to have. 
So therefore, when you find someone saying, God is about to give you everything back, I beg to differ with you, brethren, because everything that God allowed to be taken, he didn't grant to us. Amen, somebody. So the Bible declares that he's here, now he takes his journey, and in the midst of his journey, he realizes after he is, the evening is beginning to fall, that they have to begin to lodge somewhere. And the servant says, why don't we stop here in this land? But here is the Levite understanding that it is not safe for me to dwell in a foreign place. So I need to press on to the place of Gibeah where the Benjamites will reside. And he's one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the truth be told, I should be able to be granted safe passage there. Uh, so they'll look out for us. And in other words, they were a part of the family. They were a part of the body. And, 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 and what was expected was for them to be received with open arms and, 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 and never have to worry about lack on any side because he would have been amongst his family, which was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And therefore, once he gets to Gibeah, uh, he is taken in by an older man. But the Bible says when he gets into the house to expedite the story, uh, the sons of Belial begin to knock on the door. Uh, Belial, the foreign god, Belial, the sons of Belial. They, they, they were men that were homosexuals and they desired for the Levite to come out so they may sleep with him and the older gentleman that took him in. But the older gentleman says, no, why don't you take my daughter and the concubine who is the wife of the Levite? And they were not satisfied with that, but they settled for the concubine. And the Bible records that when the morning comes, they had raped her so much all night long that she died on the doorstep of the Levite. And when he goes to exit, he finds the body. Now, there's a problem when I enter a land where I should be able to have, and we be within the ark of safety, and harm comes to me. I want you to know, beloved, that every place that should be able to, 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 to help us be safe in all areas may not be the way we want it to be. There may be some times where some people begin to do things to us because of what God has called us to do and what he has called us to stand for that may not be right, but nevertheless, it's a part of the journey. We must get to the point of understanding that if I'm going to be on God's side, if I'm going to be on the team that God has put together for this season, I must be able to endure some hardship, some inflict, some affliction, some turmoil in my life because every day will not be the best day that I perceived it to be for the greater good of God. There are some things that we're going to have to suffer through because of his namesake. But the Bible records that she is here now and the, the, the Levite decides he's going to take her back to his home and he cuts her up into 12 pieces and sends one piece to each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, I said, God, why would he have to cut up the child, cut up the wife into 12 pieces and send her into the tribe, into all 12 tribes? And the Lord made me to understand because when he put the standard together of integrity of what they should follow, he gave it to them all at one time. So what does he do? He says, I'm going to send one piece to every tribe of Israel and hold them accountable for their actions. But just as the devil does most of the time, when the leaders of the tribes begin to approach Benjamin, Benjamin feels as though he's greater than the other tribes because the tribe of Benjamin were the warlords. They were the ones, whenever the Israelites went out to battle, that would go out and, and slaughter uh, their enemies. So therefore, he got besides himself. The tribe began to put more trust in their ability to fight than in the laws and integrity of God. Whatever we do in God's house, make sure that we don't put more integrity in what we do than we do in what God has called us to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible records now that when this happens, they get upset and they demand 
for the tribe of Benjamin to pass over the, the, the sons of Belial to, 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 to come to justice. However, Benjamin decides he doesn't have to abide by the laws that God puts in place. I want you to know, beloved, that sometimes God will allow abnormal situations to occur just to get us back on track where he has designated for us to be since the beginning of time. That's why sometimes in our life, things don't go the way we want them to go. Uh, the truth be told, all of us want to be rich. Uh, if we sit down and talk to everybody in here, everybody wants to have four and five cars and drive and live in a big house and have plenty of money in the bank and own our own businesses and do great experts for Lord. But the truth of the matter is all of us may not get to that point, but we must be able to understand no matter where I am, I must be satisfied in God and make sure that my lifestyle is pleasing unto him. Uh, good God from Zion, the Bible says now that when he begins to do this, uh, Benjamin now realizes he has a serious problem and it's time for him to be accountable. So they decide if you, if you don't want to hand them over, the tribe of Benjamin will go to war now. Now, I would, I would imagine that when the other 11 tribes looked at who Benjamin was and how great they were in number and how vicious they were in the battlefield, they, were, they began to get fearful. But they understood that if God be for us, he's more than the world against us. If God is on our sides, beloved, what can we not accomplish? If he is on our side, what can we not do in his name? Uh, that's why you've got to know that whenever I step out in God, he's with me. It may not be the way I want it to be all the time, but if God is with me, I shall be able to accomplish what he has put at my hands to do. Uh, I want you to know that uh, he does abnormal things in, in the process of bringing his will into full fruition. If you don't believe me, when you begin to look in the scriptures, you will find that Jose marries Gomer the whore just to expose the unfaithfulness of the Israelites. Uh, uh, God allows Judah to betray Jesus to, just to pay the debt of sin. Uh, uh, he allows David to murder Uriah Bathsheba's husband just to produce King Solomon who is the wisest man to ever live. And if that's not enough, he allows Eli's sons to fornicate on the steps of God's house. But Samuel was birthed through the spiritual loins of Eli who was responsible for the sons that were fornicating on the house that belonged to God. He would do strange things to, in order to bring his will into full fruition. Uh, I begin to look at the shift of what we're talking about and, and the subject was operation shift. Now when you begin to get into the, 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 the definition of the word shift, it is to change direction. When you use it as an intransitive verb, it is to change direction. Every now and then, I don't care who we are in God, God will call for a shift in our lives because we are not going in the direction that he desires for us to so what he says is shift into the place where I'm ordaining for you to go and you've got to be in the timeline of God as we talked about earlier because this shift is not something that we can be able to put off until we desire to go it's something we must be able to do at the point of God saying this is my will for your life someone saying well why is it necessary to shift I've come to tell you today that we all shift after becoming saved uh, uh, at the point of getting saved we must embrace the reality of being processed in the Lord which means that I have to shift into what God is calling for my life because before that point I lived a life of sin so therefore in the process of God making me into he, into who he wants me to be I must shift in direction and sometimes beloved it is very painful because the problem in the body of Christ is we don't embrace change very well whenever we begin to talk about change uh, it's going to be a group of individuals that always give us opposition because it's not the normal routine of what we do if you don't believe what I'm saying come in here next week and do something altogether different you'll get a class of people that say the service was great there'll be another group that'll say ah, it was okay but I kind of like what we do every Sunday as opposed to what we 
we just started doing today. Change is difficult no matter who you are in God because it presents the opposition and, 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 and exposes us to elements that we are unfamiliar with and being in the unfamiliar place in God is hard for us. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. When I begin to look at the, the change, the shift uh, of what it is, it reminded me of the process of the caterpillar. When the caterpillar begins, it is in the cocoon state. Uh, it's sitting, usually the cocoon is in a tree and the caterpillar must drop from the cocoon and crawl on the ground for a season in order to be processed. Now, it is dangerous because the caterpillar, as it's crawling, as it's dropped, first of all, it is the death drop only to go to the death crawl because the caterpillar now has to compete with everything else that is crawling on the ground and then avoid anything that's larger than it is that may step on him which usually would be us which means he has the potential of being killed in the process of his shift it is the same in God's house when God begins to shift us the enemy knows that he has a, a, a certain time before we are transformed into who God has called us to be since the womb so he must defeat us in the process of our death crawl it's essential to him to get into our lives it's essential for him to get into our families it is essential for him to pose opposition on every side and make us feel as though we can't do what God is calling us to do but I've come to tell somebody this morning that God is about to grant the power from on high that would give us the ability to go far beyond what I know what our neighbors may think we can't do uh, what opposition may say we can't do uh, what family members may believe we can't do I'm going higher because God's authority and power in my life will give me the ability to do great exploits somebody needs to no one today you are about to be empowered to go to your next dimension in God somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible declares but in this situation you must realize that when I'm in the process of being shifted the, de the devil now knows that he has a certain level of time I begin to equate it Bishop to uh, when we have a lease on a piece of land that lease has an expiration date and it's the same in God when it comes to the devil uh, he knows that there's a certain season that God has already ordained for us to be able to go through our state of transformation and go from being the caterpillar to the butterfly which means now I am I am able to transform to the greater glory in the Lord so he what he does is he, his job becomes to destroy you before the time is up so that's why it seems like the further you go in this walk the more intense the battle becomes because he knows if I don't destroy them here and get out that door that God allowed them to get out my kingdom will be in trouble especially in congregations like this where you have good leadership he knows that if he gets us to the place of, of, of an understanding that who we are and what we can do and, 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 and how much power we have if we work in the unity of oneness that there's nothing that we cannot accomplish so his job is to make this row go against the second row and the second row go against the third row over here on the other side and if he can create confusion and division within the body he has the church uh, somebody needs to know that no matter how bad things may look because the same principles apply in our households if he can divide mommy and daddy if he can divide son and daughter then he already has authority over our outcome but God says that if you allow me to take you through the process of shifting you into your destiny you will never have to worry about the enemy because you have more power than he understands what he doesn't get is what he doesn't get is if he, if we get out of the same situation through the lease of God that he allowed on him to expire we will never have to face this demon again one thing I know Bishop is that in every church there are demons that haunt the people of God it doesn't matter how much we pray it doesn't matter how how much we exhort it doesn't matter how much we worship the devil comes for each and every person that is in here but I want you to know in the house on today that God is about to grant the ability
ability to put the devil on the run. Somebody shout operation shift. Operation shift. He's about to give us the ability to do what God has ordained for us to do. And this is where the tribe of Benjamin was. So it was necessary for this. And now he says to them, listen, what you need to do is send Judah into the battle first. You need to send praise in to declare the victory before we ever get started. Because no matter what battles you may lose, the war ultimately belongs to me. I don't care what you've been through. Whatever battles you may have been going through and the enemy may have been gaining ground on you, understand this, the war belongs to the Lord. And therefore, I already have the victory that Christ has already ordained for my life. Shout hallelujah. Operation shift. The Bible declares that once this happens, they go down into the battle and there are 22,000 men that are slain at the hands of the Benjamites. But they get up the next day and God sends them down again. Another 8,000 is down. And then what happens is uh, they decide that they're going to go and consult God one more time. It was Phineas that said, Lord, what should we do from this point? And God said, listen, by this time tomorrow, go back down because I'm going to grant you the victory and everything that I have promised shall be God sent me here all the way from Philadelphia of the United States of Pennsylvania to tell somebody by this time tomorrow the battle that you've been trying to fight you will have the victory for and no matter what the devil says the victory is already yours your family shall be blessed your household shall be blessed whatever the Lord has designated for your life it shall be I'm almost out of time hear the understanding of this we've gone through the metamorphic process and it's our time to walk in the victory of what God called us to be don't allow the enemy to play mind games with you and make you think that you are still in a defeated state Sometimes you've got to tell the devil, I am a victor. I don't care what you say. In fact, shut up, devil. You don't have authority in here. Some of us need to go back to our houses and begin to let him know, get out of my house. You don't have authority here. We are blessed because God says we're blessed. We shall be the lender and not the borrower. We shall be above and not beneath because the Lord says through, through his word. Learn to put the word on the devil. Put the word on him. And as I close, I come to you this. You must understand that coming out of the metamorphic process means that I'm willing to go into the place of exploring the power of God. Which means I can't be safe anymore with what I do. I've got to produce something that the enemy thinks I don't have the ability to produce. I'm going to believe God for something that I've never believed him for in my life. One thing I know is this right here. God has blessed me to be able to do great things. I thank the Lord for it. And I remain humble because it's all him. It has nothing to do with Bishop Jonathan Tate. I don't have enough money to do what God has done for me. But the one thing I know, Bishop, is that no matter what we accomplish in vision, there's always another part of the vision that has to be completed. Don't get so comfortable in this state of this portion of the vision being accomplished that we fail to push forward to complete the fullness of the vision. Because this is great. But whatever the Lord is showing the leader is even greater than what you see right now. And you're blessed to be able to have leadership that you can trust. Do you not understand? We're living in a time now when if you find a good leader, you better hold on to them like he is a bag of platinum. Because we are not producing them the way we used to. 30 years ago, you could walk into churches and trust leaders. Now you can't trust them as far as you can see. 
you find people that you begin to you have bishops over and you have apostles and all of these different titles and don't nobody have a work to produce to show nothing that God has sanctioned how did you become who you are and you have no father the day of playing it safe is over you've got to treasure what you have in this house don't you let nobody come in here and tear down with God together because a leader can't do it by himself leader and his wife can't do it by themselves you hold them high and I love the fact that you already hold them high but I challenge you to put them even higher you can never put your leaders high enough because the further you thrust them up, the greater they can pull you up. They can't pull you past where they are. See, that's what most people don't understand, Bishop, is that when they put us up high, now we reach down and pull them up. And we go up together. So yes, he may be the visionary, but your destiny is tied up in his spiritual bosom. So when you let him fall, you just destroyed yourself. Good God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Listen, I'm heading back to my seat, but before I go, I want you to know one thing. You already have the victory. Don't allow the enemy to come in and tell you different. You already have the victory. I'm victorious because God says I'm victorious. And I shall make it out of whatever I'm dealing with because he's already pronounced the victory over my life. I want, I want to see right now how many victorious people we have in here. Just get on your feet and begin to give God some glory in this house. I've got the victory because God says I have it. He's already ordained it. It's sanctioned. Uh, the angels have already been rejoicing over the victory that's already pronounced over my life. And it is so.